Hey guys, this is East or the Eastern Cat NZL. Welcome to another commentary. The first one I felt came out pretty well. It's better than me vlogging when I'm really not going anywhere interesting. So here is number two. So um, since I kind of rambled on about something completely random last time, I thought I should probably actually try and do a commentary where I talk about stuff that should have been talked about during the vlogs because then you actually get to see what's happening and also I don't really have anything to talk about on screen because I am currently just staring at the sound recorder volume bar going up and down again. I don't know what you guys will be seeing on screen. I'll probably find something in a little while to play and record for however long it has to go to cover up this whole uh, commentary. So anyways, today I thought I'd talk about the people since uh, I am in a different country right now and you can say there's a bit of culture shock even though I was born here, which uh, you can take it either way. I left the country when I was like two years old. That's not old enough to remember anything about the culture, honestly. So I grew up in New Zealand and I consider myself a New Zealander. And, well, let's just start with some basics. So there's one thing to say about um, the people around me right now in Hong Kong. It's, in one word, impatience. Have you ever shopped, uh, well, well, that's not the right way to say it. If you ever come to Hong Kong, the first thing you need to know is that your walking speed may be challenged by pedestrians on the street, including old ladies. They do move really fast, and they're really impatient, and they won't push you, but they'll try to squeeze past you, and that may result in pushing if you're um, blocking them in a wide group, because they will try to push past you somehow. And, like, not gently, they will actually try and push past you. Well... Some of them will push past you gently, some of them will stay behind you and wait for a gap. But there will be some people who are particularly in a rush who will just slam their way past you. Well, do not slam, that's a bit of exaggeration, but they will try to find a way past you because you're going too slow. So, there's like a lot of things, I guess probably talk about culture more because that's what, like what, hand in hand with people. But the most basic thing you can see here is kind of like, uh... You are supposed to stand at the crossing and wait for the green man to tell you to go, right? Well, that doesn't occur here. Uh, I always thought it was a bit more of a joke that um, Asian people tended to uh, jaywalk more along the roads, but after coming here, I found that's part of the um, culture here. They No one waits. You have people, like you have the... Um, your standard everyday working men and women who are in their suits that cross the road without caring about the light. You have the school kids who cross the road without caring about the lights. You have moms carrying their babies crossing the road without caring about the lights. And then you even have old ladies crossing the road really slowly without caring about the lights. So that's always interesting because um, I've seen about, I've been here for maybe about three-ish. Well, I'm recording this about two and a half weeks into um, my stay here, and I swear, swear I've seen about like three people nearly get run over. Um, two of them were on phones, one of them, well, that guy was actually driving a little bit fast. I have no idea what um, the speed limit is because there's no signs anywhere to tell you what speed you should be going at apart from car parks, I think. And that's like, car parks are not a common thing here. Uh, honestly, I just was. What I like to tell people the most about um, why people from um, Hong Kong can't drive or uh, just like in this general uh, area of Asia because that's all I know about because I've never been to any other part of Asia. Uh, if you own a car here, in my honest opinion, you are part of the reason why the traffic sucks. Like, um, you can get around the whole of Hong Kong from one corner, which is honestly where I am, to the other corner in like a minimum of two hours if you decide to take the train and spin around in circles which is why I usually do because otherwise I'll get lost because I don't know how to take the buses and I don't know how to look at the bus routes um, but if you actually know how to take the bus routes and you took a bus straight from place to place because there's connections literally everywhere you can get from um, one corner to the other probably an under an hour honestly um, they've got the routes set up they've got the roads set up you can get from place to place super fast there's no reason to be so hasty, honestly. Um, I don't know why people are that hasty, but uh, it's just part of how life goes here. So that is always interesting. Also, the fact that um, 
I know in my vlog, that the one vlog I did, I did um, have a couple of shots of the trains. Uh, I haven't been in a super packed bus yet, because I actually know I have, but it wasn't so absurdly packed because it was a bus that was kind of going nowhere. Um, my aunties kind of live off like in the mountains ish because um, the government's been trying to build more housing and. Well, let's just say, like, the house I'm in right now is quite nice because it's more of what I know as in, like, a regular house, except that there's, like, three floors and each floor um, is rented out, I think. I don't know if it's rented or um, it's mortgaged or whatever, but we're on flat ground. We're not an apartment. You know, I could probably last an apartment because if I probably, like... Um, I mean, my dream job would be to go into Japan and I'll probably end up in an apartment there or... Otherwise, to America, where likely, since I'll be by myself for um, some unspecified amount of time, unless I get like married or something, which I don't see happening in the near future, I'll probably be in an apartment as well, because I only need to house one person, unless I go and um, rent for other people. But that's a different story. So, um, yeah, so, uh, you saw the vlog and the train part. The trains get really packed. I have been in there once in the rush hour. I ignored the first train when I got down there because it was um, halfway to uh, the doors closing and well, they're already packed to the door literally so I just like ignored it because when you come down the escalator you usually end up around the middle-ish. Usually there's about five cars. Uh, cars two, three and four are usually packed stupid and also the car closest to where the escalator comes down which is either one or five will also be packed stupid. So I ignored the first train and I walked all the way down to the other side. Um, the next train that came along was nice, like, that end train is always empty because no one can be stuffed walking either, like, people are impatient but they're also lazy, they'll just like, instead of walking down to where there's space, they'll instead try to force their way into a really packed car, which is absolutely insane in my opinion, I, like, the trains in um, New Zealand, if you can somehow pack them. I don't know what's happening. I don't know what event's happening. I don't know why there'll be so much people on the train. I mean, honestly, a suburb uh, um, in New Zealand housing like an average of like two people per house to like four people per house. Like a whole suburb area could probably fit in one apartment here. The apartments are freaking tall. Like uh, the ones just down the road from um, where I'm living right now. I'd say they probably got the 30 floors, and on each floor, I would dare say there's about, like, probably at least 8 rooms, or, like, 8 apartment rooms, so that's a lot of people you can fit in there, especially since, um, if you ever see shops, like, if you go into, like, the CBD of, like, any place, or like, any western country, and you see, like, the shops, like, in the smaller streets, uh, especially the one-way ones, where there's only, like, but you basically if you're driving you use that road to slip through and it takes forever because um you have to go like twenty Ks while um dodging pedestrians who just cross the road because there's no one ever drives down there or if they do it's, it's because they have to slip through there and they're experiencing absolute uh, nightmares because you can't get through there. But like you'll see those shops which are really tiny, um, usually run by Asian person, like they can somehow fit four workers in there and they still have enough space to work comfortably. That's basically what you see here, like, except that it's everywhere, like, um, I don't know if I took a shot of it in the walk, uh, I did around Mong Kok in the vlog, in the one place I know the shop, but, uh, ignoring that, um, there's, like, literally a shop in there that sells, uh, I believe they sell manga, I have the impression they do, and basically you have, like, maybe, I don't know, like, a two to three meter, like maybe a three by three meter um, floor space shop with what, like, all the walls are packed with books, the middle is packed with books, and then the counter is made of books, basically. Well, apart from like the counter maybe. I think there's like a little bit of actual like wooden structure for the counter and where the register sits. And that's literally the only thing that's not books. And I was like, look, I just like looked in there, I was like, because, um, I go there pretty much every two weeks to get a new book to read, uh, and then that, that'll pretty much be all my luggage when I go back to New Zealand, but, um, I looked in there, I was like, um, I haven't been in here yet, looks inside, nah, just nah, just nah. So, 
that was probably one of the more interesting experiences I've had with like not shopping, even though I wanted to go in there. Um, I did go uh, to more places in the, um, I believe it's called the Shin O Shopping Center. I'm not too sure, but that's probably the only place I'll ever go shop in Hong Kong because I'm I kind of close shop because I have no fashion sense. Like my fashion sense basically revolves around shirt check and pants. Like, we need a shorts or pants, check, socks, check, shoes, check, good to go. Like, I literally have no shits about what I wear and how people see me on the outside because I really don't care. Um, which is not a good thing since I, well, it's not always a good thing. Most of the time I don't care, but, like, my, like, the amount I care about my own appearance is terrible and it reflects on how poor my, um, collection, I guess, I guess you could call it, of uh, work-suitable clothes are, even for office job that's like not super serious, because I've been to a couple of interviews for IT jobs, looking for full-time work when I'm going to go to stay to a February and be a dick that runs off, but um, <laughs> that's always a thing. Uh, so, basically that's one thing. Also, um, there's like a bit like in the people here that they, well, probably um, the weirdest thing I guess you could say is how much people look at their phones. Like, I always made, like, I, well, what I tell my friends because um, the majority of them, if I can say it really bluntly, are white males and um, I always tell them that I have the right to be racist to Asians because I am Asian. Basically, I'm just like yelling at my own people, which is how I justify it, even though it's not the case because I'm, uh, I am uh, Chinese, but I grew up in New Zealand. I have like, I'm basically a fake local right now, even though when I'm um in New Zealand, I'm a fake foreigner. But <laughs> that's like, I always made like pretty, what what you could call racist comments, I guess, from like. All those Asians who stare at their phones like 24-7, like if they take their eyes off for a little bit inside them dies or something. And I always made fun of that, but um, I came here and the number of people who look at their phones while walking is insane. Like, uh, I mention this a lot, but I am working, like I'm studying in uh, game development and I made the joke a while back of how social interactions, well, yeah, social interactions Basically, since smartphones came out, which was, I don't know, how many years ago? Because uh, I recently, only recently got like a decent smartphone that's competent on doing anything. But um, I made a joke of like, social uh, interactions in the current present day. You go to a place to get a good. You sit down to get a good. You take out your phones. Okay. And then you start texting people that aren't there. Or you text the guy across the table from you because you're too freaking lazy to like talk loud enough to like get like have the guy opposite you hear you like I always made that joke but like nowadays I, I'm actually like prepared to see like the continuation of the joke actually I should probably finish before I like rant off somewhere else was um one day we're all gonna get into VR virtual reality we're gonna put those whatever headsets or um chips or visors or glasses or whatever, body suits, I don't know, full body type VR sets. Maybe that'll become a thing one day. And like get into virtual reality and then we're gonna virtually message the guy next to you because you can't be stopped talking. Like when I see people here that's literally what I feel will happen if um virtual reality became a consumer accessible thing. I mean PlayStation VR is getting there but um, the HTC Vive and the Oculus Rift really isn't, <laughs> so, uh, that's always, like, a really interesting topic for me, because, um, I wouldn't consider myself a social person, I am fine talking to people, I, well, part of the reason I'm not very good at being social is also because I really don't give a shit about anything, I'm one of those people, so, I pretty openly insult people if, um, if I have no need to control what I'm talking about, like, if I'm, obviously if I go to, like, a job interview or something, I'll be a bit more polite, but normally I don't hold back, and I'm actually a pretty rude person in general. I do try to hold back a little bit in videos, um, with the swearing anyway, otherwise I don't actually care, 
I will say whatever comes to mind, and it's actually not a very good thing. So, uh, people here definitely, um, I wouldn't say uh, the most polite in a way. I don't know, it's just, um, I guess because I have grown up in a Western culture, and I pretty much, I've essentially got a Western uh, mindset, like, hearing people speak here in Cantonese, they speak fast, and they also, like, um, how do you say it, like, they really point out what they're trying to say in, like, this really forward tone that makes them sound angry while saying it, I guess. I mean, like, one of my teachers back in high school always said that people were speaking in, um, either, I think it was, like, specifically, um, uh, Chinese people speaking Cantonese always sound angry, and honestly, I can agree with that. Like, I am a Chinese who speaks Cantonese, and I mean, I speak like really broken. Like, well, I don't really speak really broken, but um, the way I talk is uh, a lot slower, and um, I also laugh a lot when I talk for some reason nowadays. I don't know why, but like when people talk, like the people around me talk in Cantonese, like if they have to like make a point, they sound freaking angry. It is insane. Like. I know they aren't angry, but like when they're like trying to make a point, they just like sound freaking angry. I don't know what it is, but it's just like one of those things. And like, also probably the impatient point. Like, I mean, I go into the shop, right? I want to look at what you're selling, and the person, like the salesperson, comes up to me and asks us if I need help, and that's all cool. So like, that's really cool. And then like. I started talking to him about stuff, and then he starts, like, talking about the stuff, and then he starts, like, hurrying me. I was like, dude, you don't have to hurry me. There's, like, no one else here. I mean, like, I was in there, probably not the busiest hour, but, um, one of the shops actually had this dude, like, hurry me like crazy. Like, that was really weird. I haven't experienced that, uh, where I come from, so, or more like the other shops I went into, the person kind of talks to me, and then, like, stands back, I'm just like, I don't know if you're trying to, like, be nice and give me space where you just don't want to talk to me. Like, he actually stood really far back, or, like, like I mean, the shops aren't big, but he still, like, pretty much stepped all the way back to the counter from, like, the display, which was interesting. At least the, um, the dudes where I bought the, uh, my new phone were quite nice. You know, that was a Samsung shop, so I presume they had to be, like, more professional, since that's a big name that they upkeep. I don't know. Um, but <laughs> that's... Like, I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. But, like, the people on their phones, like, I guess it's not really um, that much of a surprise since phones are such a big part of our lives now. Um, one of the YouTubers I was watching before was like, well, I watch, I still watch him, but, like, one of the videos he had before was just literally talking about how um, the millennial generation can't live without them because it's just like ingrained into their lives now. So that's always um, one of those moments where you're just like, did technology go the right way or the wrong way? Uh, also, there was like another point I found like somewhere. I think it was like a probably a Facebook post talking about like what would have happened if this like got invented after this or something. Uh, I think it was something to do with phones and how like something would be like incredible. Or whatever, if like one like okay something very mundane. Actually, no, I don't know where I saw that, but it's like something really like considered mundane nowadays because of um how technology's advanced. If it came after something like that, we both have now, right? And you know, becomes some incredible thing. And like since I've been seeing so many people using their phones recently, like I actually like thought about it, like for a good minute after, like, hearing it or seeing it, I can't remember. I was just like, that makes sense. So, that was always an interesting thing. But, um, yeah, so I think that might do it for today. I don't really have much to talk about since I don't really have any topics. And also I don't have anything on the screen to look at apart from the volume bar going up and down and my wallpaper. So, um, anyways, that will be it for me. Um, I think I'll probably keep doing commentaries unless I actually take the bravery to go and record things with my um, laptop mic. I might actually do that because I still actually need more videos for um, Hyper Devotion Noel, but I don't know. I might be able to ask for my um, 
laptop microphone on that. It seems like the quality of the videos are okay, even though I record on my laptop and edit on my laptop, so it just takes a little bit longer to edit, so get good look forward to that. But anyways, that'll be it for me today. Uh, thanks for stopping by, if you've listened to, to me um, rant for a good 20 minutes now. So, um, anyways, uh, actually, yeah, I have nothing else to say. Bye-bye.